London, 1935. August. I'd been back three months in the old country, and frankly, wondering why. The weather made me liverish, no exercise to speak of, and the talk of the ordinary Englishman made me sick. I'd had enough of restaurants and parties and race meetings. No pal to go about with, which probably explains things. Hoppy Bing, lost in the Canadian treasury. Tommy Deloraine, married off to a blonde heiress in Chicago. Chips Carruthers, eaten by crocodiles in an Limpopo. Leaving me, Richard Hannay, 37 years old, sound in wind and limb, back home. Which was no home at all, if you want to know. Just a dull little rented flat in West One. Portland Place, actually. And I was bored. No, more than bored. Tired. Tired of the world and tired of life, to be honest. So, I called my broker. He ordered in. Dropped into my club. Full of old colonial buffers. Had a scotch and soda. Picked up an evening paper. Put it back. Full of elections and wars and rumours of wars. And I thought, who the bloody hell cares, frankly? What does it all matter? What happens to anyone? What happens to me? No one would miss me. I wouldn't miss me. I could quite easily just... Then I thought, wait a minute. Come on, Hanno. Put yourself together, man. Find something to do, you bloody fool. Something mindless and trivial. Something utterly pointless. Something... I know! A West End show! That should do the trick! Excuse me, please. Excuse me. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen! And now, with your kind attention, I have the immense honour and privilege to present to you one of the most remarkable men ever in the old world. Mr. Memory! Every day, Mr. Memory commits to memory 50 new facts and remembers every one of them. Facts from history and from geography, from newspapers and from scientific books. In fact, more facts is in his brain than it's possible to conceive. Settle down now, please. I will also mention that before retiring, Mr. Memory has kindly consented to leaving his entire brain to the British Museum for scientific purposes. Thank you. Thank you. I will now place myself in a state of mental readiness for this evening's performance and clear my inner being of all extrinsic and supernumerary material. Is this seat taken? Not as far as I know. Now then, are you ready for the questions, Mr. Memory? Quite ready for the questions, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now then, ladies and gents, first question, please. Come on now, please. What causes Pep in poultry? Who won the cup in 26? Pardon, sir? What's that, sir? Who won the cup in 1926? Who won the cup in 1926? Who won the cup in 1926? The Arsenal Gunners won the cup in 1926, defeating the Tottenham Hotspurs by five goals to nil in the presence of His Majesty King George V. Am I right, sir? Quite right, Mr. Memory. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. What was Napoleon's horse called? 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 Napoleon's horse was called Bellerophon. We rode for the final time at Waterloo, June 15th, 1815. Am I right, sir? Quite right, Mr. Memory. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. How old's May West? What was that, sir? <laughs> How old's May West? How old's May West, Mr. Memory? Well, I know, sir, but I never tell a lady's age. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Mr. Memory. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Now then, a serious question, please. I say. Who was that? Yes, sir? How far is Winnipeg from Montreal? Ah, a gentleman from Canada. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. How far is Winnipeg from Montreal, Mr. Memory? Winnipeg from Montreal, sir. Winnipeg from Montreal. 1,454 miles. Am I right, sir? Quite right. Thank you, sir. Up there. That's it. Thank you, sir. <gasps> Shay, sir. Are you all right? Thank you, yes. And the next question, please. Did you hear that? Calm down, ladies and gents. Calm down, please. Excuse me. 
Yes? May I come home with you? What's the big idea? Well, I'd like to. Calm down, please. Well, it's rather tricky at the moment. You see, I've got the decorators in and... Please, you have to. Well, it's your funeral. What was the Premier's horse called? Winnie Pig. What defeated King George V by five goes to nil. Am I right, sir? Very good, Mr. Memory. Next question, please. That's enough, Mr. M. Big pardon, sir. I know, sir, but I never tell the ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Never can find the switch, damn it. Turn it off, quickly. Scheiße, blind. Sorry? Blind. Blind? Blind, blind, pulsy blind. Oh, blind, of course. Sorry. Blind, yes. Sorry about that. Now the light, Mr. Henney. Light. Right. Have a drink, why don't you? Thank you. For you? Thank you. Mr. Henney. How do you know my name? I saw it in the lobby. Ah, uh, yes. Hello, there's the telephone. Don't answer it, please. Why not? Because I think it is for me. Please, don't answer. Now look here. Yes? Am I allowed to know your name? You don't want to know my name. Don't I? Schmidt. Schmidt? Annabella Schmidt. So what's the story, Annabella Schmidt? Mr. Henney? Yes? May I be very impertinent for a moment and ask for something to eat? But of course. Would you care for some haddock? Haddock would be wunderbar, thank you. Nothing like a spot of haddock. Now look here. Yes? It was you who fired that revolver in the theatre, wasn't it? It wasn't a great show, but it wasn't that bad. It was a diversion. There were two men in a theatre trying to shoot me. You should be more careful in choosing your gentleman friends. No jokes, Mr. Henney, please. Beautiful, mysterious woman pursued by gunmen. Sounds like a spy story. That's exactly what it is. Only I prefer the word agent better. Secret agent, I suppose. For which country? I have no country. Born in a balloon, eh? Mr. Henney, please, I am being pursued by a very brilliant secret agent of a certain foreign power who is on the point of obtaining highly confidential information vital to your air defense. I tracked two of his men to that music hall. Unfortunately, they recognized me. Ever heard of a thing called persecution mania? You don't believe me? Frankly, I don't. They are in the street at this moment, beneath your English lamppost. Take a look, why don't you? But be careful! Now do you believe me? You win. Mr. Henney, I'm going to tell you something which is not very healthy. It will mean either life or death. But if I tell you, then you are... involved. Involved? You wish to be involved? Tell me. Very well. Have you heard of the... 39 Steps? What's that, a pub? Your English humour will not help, Mr. Henney. These men will stick at nothing, and I am the only person who can stop them. If they are not stopped, it is only a matter of days, perhaps hours, before the top secret and highly confidential information is out of the country. And when they've got it out of the country, God help us all. What about the police? The police? They would not believe me any more than you did. With their boots and their whistles? It is up to us, Mr. Henney. I tell you, these men act quickly. You don't know how clever their chief is. I know him very well. He has a dozen names. He can look like a hundred people. But one thing he cannot disguise. This part of his little finger is missing. So if ever you should meet a man with no top joints there, be very careful, my friend. I'll remember that. Mr. Henney? Richard. Richard. Yes? May I stay the night, please? Of course. You can sleep in my bed. Thank you. I'll get a shakedown on the armchair. As you wish. And one more thing. Your haddock? Mein haddock. I have rather lost the taste for haddock. No, I need... Yes? A map of Scotland. Scotland? There's a man in Scotland who I must visit next if anything is to be done. An Englishman. He lives in a... Uh, big house. A big house? 
at a place called Altna Shellach. I beg your pardon? Altna Shellach. Altna Shellach. And the 39... Bring it to my room. Certainly. Good night, Richard. Good night, Annabella. Richard? Annabella? Oh, Richard. Richard. Now look here, Annabella. You just breeze into my life from nowhere. You get me all, you know, involved and, well, actually I've never met anyone quite like you and, and frankly, to be quite frank... Oh, Richard. Richard? My goodness! You've been stabbed! In the back! I'm so sorry. So very sorry. Richard? Yes? These men, they act quickly. They will stop at nothing. Nothing, you hear me? Now there is no turning back. Oh, my dear Richard. Uh, Golly. The map. Shalak. There's a man in Scotland. Only a matter of days. Perhaps hours. Before the secret is out of the country. They act quickly. Blimey, mate, what you up to? I nearly died of fright. Could you use a pound note, brother? A pound note? A pound note? What's the catch? I need your cap and coat. Cap and coat? Cap and coat? What's the game? Spit it out. I need to make a getaway. Do a bunk? Yes. What you been up to? I'm going to have to trust you. There's been a murder committed on the first floor. A murder? A murder? By who? By you? No, no. By those two men over there. Oh, I see. So now they're waiting, good as gold, for a cop to come and arrest them, eh? It's quite true, I tell you. They're spies. Foreigners. They've murdered a woman in my flat, and now they're waiting for me. Ah, oh, come off it. Funny jokes at five o'clock in the morning. All right, all right. I'll tell you the truth. Are you married? Yes, but don't rub it in. Well, I'm not, you see. I'm a bachelor. Lucky you. But I've been seeing this married woman. Naughty. Point is... Yeah? She was leading me on. No. It was all a set-up. Would you believe it? See those two men over there? I do. You know who they are? Don't tell me. One's her brother, the other's her husband. Core blimey, I wouldn't be in your shoes. Here, have my cap and coat. Thank you. Perfect. I say, take a pound. A pound? That's very kind of you. Take two. Two pounds? God bless you, Gov. Leave the pony around the corner. You'll do the same for me one day. <laughs> Hang on. That's out of my coat. That's my money you just give me. Oi, come back here. Oi. You could hear the old feet fell as they raced across the ground. Morning, Mr. N.A. How you keeping? What a lovely morning this morning it is this morning. What about this here heat wave? Never seen nothing like it. People dropping like flies. Hello, what's this under here? Free than they were 20 years ago. More free. Free and easy. <laughs> Remember the old fashioned salt? 
all bones and no bends. <laughs> My wife. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this now. Our new streamlined model, number one. A glory to be old. Anything to go with it? Look at this little beauty. Now that's a sight for sore eyes. You can say that again. The two wonders of the modern world. Tell you what, bring them back when they're filled. Get it? Get it? When they're filled. When they're filled. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. <laughs> that's that's the, the spirit. spirit. Where are we now? Halifax. Durham, Berry Quan Tweed, Biscuit, much obliged. Biscuit? No, thank you. Suit yourself. Here we are, Edinburgh Town. That was quick. One got one, the two o'clock at Windsor. I'll get a paper. <whistles> Evening paper, latest news. Evening paper, latest news. Evening paper, please. Evening paper, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good Lord. What is it? Been a woman murdered in a fashionable West End flat. All these sex dramas don't appeal to me. What one? What one what? The two o'clock at Windsor. The two o'clock at Windsor? Bachelor boy. Good. At seven to four on. Not so good. Anyway, where was we? Oh yes. Stabbed in the back she was. Portland Mansions, Portland Place. By the BBC? That's the place to put someone to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> What was she like? One of the usual. Well-dressed woman about 35. Terrible. Terrible? Terrible. The tenant, Richard Hannay, is missing. You do surprise me. Approximately 37, dark wavy hair, piercing blue eyes, pencil moustache. <clears throat> Excuse me? Yes? Might I have a look at your paper? Certainly. Thank you. Think I'll uh, pop to the buffet car. Fancy anything? No, thank you. No, thank you. Right, you are. Excuse me. Sorry. 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 Good heavens. Place is stiff with police. Excuse me, constable. Caught a West End murderer yet? We'll catch him, don't you worry, sir. That's the spirit. All aboard for the Highlands. Next stop, the Highlands. Anything suspicious? Let us know, sir. Oh, yes. Don't you worry. All aboard, all aboard. Final edition, sir. Final edition. Keep your eyes peeled, won't you, sir? Certainly will, Constable. Don't forget, sir. No, I won't, Constable. Read all about it. Read all about it. All aboard, all aboard. Anything suspicious? Let us know, sir. Will do, Constable. All aboard, all aboard. Is this the 941 to Reading? Platform 12. Thank you. All aboard, let's be having you. Read all about it, read all about it. Excuse me, sorry, sorry. 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 Well, back from the buffet. Listen to this. What? The police are searching the train. Every compartment. Every compartment? Listen, here's a corker. There was a young man from Nantucket. Excuse me. Hope you don't mind us talking shop. No, no, not at all, no. We're on the run, you see. From our wives. Never go home. We ride the railways and sell underwear. That's all we do. <laughs> <laughs> A young man from Nantucket grew a Venus flytrap in a bucket. He said when it grew, now what do I do? Do I keep it for breeding? Sorry. He's in a rush. Excuse me please, sorry to disturb you. Have you seen this man? His name is Richard Hannay. Excuse me please, sorry to disturb you. Have you seen this man? His name is Richard Hannay.
Darling, how lovely to see you. Someone having a free lunch in there. And a free pudding too, I wouldn't wonder. <laughs> Listen, I'm so terribly sorry, but I was desperate, I had to do it. My name's Richard Hannay. They're after me for murder. I swear I'm innocent. You've got to help me. I've got to be free for the next few days. You see, the safety of this country depends upon it. So sorry to disturb you, but it'll be either you seen a man pass in the last few minutes. His name is Richard Hannay. This is the man you want, Inspector. But we came by just now and saw you both. Well, you know. He pushed in here and forced himself upon me. His name is Richard Hannay. Is your name Richard Hannay? Certainly not. But this attractive young lady clearly stated. <laughs> After him, Constable. Right, sir. He's on the roof. We're on the fourth bridge, sir. I can see that, Constable. Grab him, man. Very good, sir. Can I help? Not right now, miss. I'll stand here, then. Very good, miss. Uh, just a thought. Yes, miss? What about the communication cord? Good idea, miss. Shall I pull it? Best if I do, miss. Righto. Pulling the communication cord? Now! No, sir, not the communication... Oh, uh, crikey. The suspect, Richard Hannay, managed to jump from a train onto the fourth bridge just outside Edinburgh. Police pursued him onto the bridge, but he gave them the slip, hanging from the girders with his bare hands. The suspect is approximately 37 and about 6 foot 1. Although he is clearly dangerous, he's quite good looking actually, with dark wavy hair, piercing blue eyes and a very attractive pencil moustache. It is not known whether he survived his ordeal. Police had to call off the search in the gathering darkness. Hello there. Can I help you? Yes, I'm um, looking for work. What kind of work? I'm an itinerant labourer. You'll find nothing in this vicinity. Are there no big houses around here? No big hooses. So what's that big house? What big hoose? That big house. Oh, that big hoose. Isn't that a big house? That is a big hoose. So whose hoose is that then? A professor, I believe. Professor Jordan. An Englishman. An Englishman? It wouldn't be called... Alt Nishalak, would it? Aye, it would. Right, well, thanks very much. I'll try there. Cheerio! You won't tonight. Won't I? It's 14 miles. The other side of the loch. No, really, I'm sure I'll be... Margaret! Aye? Come here. We have a visitor. Oh, good evening, sir. Good evening. You can stay here if you wanted. Well, on second thoughts, that'd be very kind. Can you eat the herring? I could murder half a dozen right now. Can you sleep in a box bed? I can try. Two and six. Done. Seat to the gentleman and be quick about it. Your daughter? My wife. Well done. Prepare the herring. Aye. I'll see to the coos. Sorry? I'll see to the coos. Right. Will you come in? I'd love to. There's your bed. Marvellous. Could you sleep there, do you think? I could sleep anywhere right now. Won't you sit down, please, while I go on with our supper? Thank you. I say. Yes? You wouldn't have today's paper. My husband has the paper. Right. So, um, been in these parts long? No, I'm from Glasgow. Glasgow? Did you ever see it? No, I never did. Oh, you should. You should see Socky Hall Street on a Saturday night, with its fine shops and the trams and the lights and the cinema palaces and the crowds. It's Saturday night tonight. Well, I've never been to Glasgow, but I've been to Edinburgh and Montreal and London. London? I could tell you all about London at supper. Could you? Certainly could. No. John would not approve of that, I doubt. John? 
My husband, he says it's best not to think of such places and the wickedness that goes on there. Or... I could tell you now. Now? If you wanted. Aye, you could. What would you like to know? Is it true that the ladies paint their toenails? Some of them. And put rouge and lipstick on their faces? They do, yes. Do London ladies look beautiful? They wouldn't if you were beside them. Oh, you ought not to say that. Ought not to say what? Oh, I was just uh, saying to your wife that I prefer living in the town to the country. God made the country. Certainly did. Supper ready, woman? Almost. Then hurry yourself. Do you mind if I look at your paper? Suit yourself. Thank you. You didn't tell me your name. Oh, um, Hammond. Mr. Orham Hammond. No, Hammond. Here we are. Splendid. I'll say a blessing afore we begin. Good idea. Oh, most mighty and unforgiving father, sanctify these bounteous and undeserved mercies to us miserable sinners. Make us bow on bended knee. Make us truly thankful for all thy manifold blessings. And continually turn our loathsome hearts from wickedness. Beat our gluttonous thoughts and lash our lustful desires as with a three-forked flailing stick, pressing our bestial noses to the grindstone and blinding our eyes to the tawdry beads and baubles of all worldly wicked things. Amen. 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 Ah, I just remembered I forgot to uh, lock up the barn. I'll go and uh, lock it. All right, yeah. Sir, wake up, please, sir. Oh, hello. Oh, sir, no, no, I don't mean... It's the police, sir, of Mr. Oham Hammond. Wake up, I beg of you, sir. The police? You must go now while there's still a chance. Yeah, yeah, I might have known, making love behind my back. Get out, and as for ye... Not so fast, my friend. No, go, go. It's your only chance of liberty. Listen, you're all wrong about this. She's only tried to help me. Aye, to bring shame and disgrace upon my use. Actually, if you want to know, I'm on the run from the police. The police? They're after me for murder. Mother police? They're right outside. Don't let them in. Say I'm not here. Ah. I'll make it worth your while. How much? Five pounds. In cash? Will you take a check? Don't be funny with me. Pee him! Pee him! Here. Oh, I didn't trust him. Listen. Aye, I was right. He's double-crossing you quick. Now's your time through the window. <laughs> Not that window. Which window? The rear window. <laughs> Wait. What? Your jacket. My jacket? It's terrible light coloured. Who oh, is it? It's the latest Harris Tweed. I'm afraid they'll see you on the dark moors. Best take this one. This is your husband's coat. Aye, his Sunday best. It's so black they'll never see you. What's this? His hymn book. I can sing a hymn if I get frightened. Don't joke, I beg of you. What'll happen to you? Don't worry about me. I wish I could take you away from all this. No, this is my home. What's your name? Margaret. Goodbye, Margaret. I'll never forget you for this. Go! Now! There he is! After him!
wanted in connection with the Portland Place murder, has been spotted on the moors near Loch Crimmond. Police have warned he is almost certainly armed and dangerous. Here is his description once again. He is approximately 37 and about 6 foot 1. With dark wavy hair, piercing blue eyes and of course his very attractive pencil moustache. His time on the moors has actually made him slightly more rugged looking, which makes him look even better looking than he did before. The suspect, Richard Hannay, is currently on foot in inhospitable terrain, and police can assure listeners that they are closing in with specialist squads in fugitive apprehension by foot, road and by air. You, but I'm looking for the Professor, Professor Jordan. Professor Jordan? I am the Professor's wife, Louisa Jordan. I do beg your pardon, Mrs. Jordan. May I see the Professor? It's really quite important. May I know your name? Yes, my name is Hammond. Tell him a friend of Miss Annabella Schmidt. Miss Annabella Schmidt? Come in, Mr. Hammond, if you would, please. Thank you. Lovely house. We like it. We're just having a few drinks with some friends to celebrate my daughter Hilary's birthday. A number of well-to-do acquaintances of my husband, including the sheriff of the county. Later we're organising a shooting party. Perhaps you'd care to join us. Thank you. Shall we pop into the party? <laughs> On second thoughts, if you wouldn't mind waiting in here, Mr Hammond, I'll fetch my husband directly. Certainly. Mr. Hammond, so sorry to have kept you. It's quite all right. So, you're from Annabella Schmidt? I am, yes. Do you have any news? She's been murdered. Murdered? Oh dear. Yes, of course. The Portland Mansions affair. Quite dreadful. And now the police are after you. They are, rather. Well, don't worry about them. I've managed to put them off the scent. They'll be far away by now. Thanks awfully. Not at all, old chap. I didn't do it. Of course you didn't do it, Mr. Mr. Hannay. I suppose it's safe to call you by your real name now. Quite safe. Jolly good. But tell me, why did you come all the way to Scotland to tell me about it? Because I believe she was trying to tell you about some sort of secret, top secret air ministry secret. She was killed by a foreign agent who was interested too. Really? Well, I'm so glad you told me. I'm risking your life into the bargain. How can I ever thank you? The thing is, Professor, she was looking for something. Yes? Something called... Go on. The 39 Steps. If we can find out what the 39 Steps are, then... So, 
Let me get this quite clear. Oh, I'm so sorry. You must be exhausted. Do take a seat, Mr. Hannay. Better? Thank you. So, did she tell you what this foreign agent looked like? There wasn't time. Oh, there was one thing. Part of his little finger was missing. Which little finger? This one, I think. Are you sure it wasn't this one? I'm not sure. I think... <gasps> Mr. Hannay, I'm afraid I've been guilty of leading you down the garden path. Or should I say up? I never can remember. It seems to be the wrong garden, all right. Yes, I'm afraid it does. Mr. Hannay, you forced me into a very difficult position. You see, I live here as a respectable citizen. My very best friend is the sheriff of the county. You must realise my whole existence could be jeopardised if it became known that I was not, how shall I say, not what I seem. You see, there's my wife and daughter to think of. But what makes it doubly important that I simply can't let you go is I'm just about to convey some very vital information out of the country. Oh yes, I've got it all right. I'm afraid poor Annabella would have been far too late. So it seems there was only one option, Mr Hannay. I should be serving lunch directly, dear. The sheriff has to go at three. Will Mr Hammond be staying? I don't think so, dear. Unless, of course, you decide to join us. For lunch? Very good, Mr Hannay. You see, you're just the kind of man we need. Sharp, intelligent, cold-blooded, ruthless. When the war comes, these will be the exact qualities we need. War? Oh, yes. We'll have quite a show of it. And what if I don't believe in those qualities? What other qualities are there? Well, human qualities. Human qualities? What human qualities? Loyalty, selflessness, sacrifice, love. <laughs> love? Oh, please, Mr Hannay. What if you ever loved anyone? It's not in your nature, old sport. Never has been, has it? You have no hearts, do you, Hannay? But you know this. So sad, isn't it? No one to love. No one to care for. No home to go to. But there is, you see, there is our home. Our home? That is the only place you will find love, old chum, where you really and truly belong. Oh, we will give you love, Hannay, and in return, you will love us. It's a master race on our great unstoppable march, commanded eternally by destiny itself. Well, old sport, what do you say? Will you join us, Hannay? All right, Professor. If you think I'm suitable material. <laughs> oh, I do. I do, old sport. How unutterably splendid. I'll tell Mrs Jordan. Oh, there's just one thing. Sorry. Of course, anything. One little question. Ask away. Before I sign up. Absolutely, my Liebling. What exactly is, um... Yes, yes, yes. The 39 Steps. The 39 Steps? The 39 Steps, though I say so myself, is my own brilliant idea. The very soul of the enterprise is a very... But wait a minute. Wait a minute. You you think you can possible? You thought you could join us in Zen? Master Race, I despise you. You are as bad as she was. Annabella Schmidt, with all her outmoded, sentimental notions, her high-minded, democratic, bovine drivel. I thought for a moment you might... But no, no. You, you pathetic, pusillanimous, petty-minded. Oh, bugger. The 39 steps. I tell you, Mr. Hannay, you will never, ever know.